this lesson is the capital that couldn't be steel, or how Tennessee finally decided on a state capital. June 1, 1796, Tennessee officially becomes a state, and with a new state, there's a lot of new things that have to happen. John Sevier was selected as the first governor, and that's what he looked like. And then Knoxville was selected as the first state capital. And you may be wondering, well, why was Knoxville picked? I thought our state capital was Nashville. So let's kind of look at this and see the history of how our state capital moved around quite a bit in those first several years. When Tennessee became a state, it did not look the same as present day Tennessee. There were two districts in the beginning, one that was in Upper East Tennessee and one in Middle Tennessee, shown here in blue. So John Sevier was governor over this part of Tennessee. Our state expanded westward with ad the addition of the Cumberland Plateau area and southern Middle Tennessee, but Tennessee was not complete as to what we think of it today until the Jackson Purchase of 1818. So that brought in the land between the Tennessee River and the Mississippi River and made our state complete. Looking at a map of present-day Tennessee, we'll use it to show how the state capital moved around in those early years. So Knoxville was designated as the capital in 1796. Brand new state, new state capital. It stayed there until 1807. When it moved to Kingston, which is just down the road, it stayed in Kingston for only one day before coming back to Knoxville. It stayed in Knoxville until 1812 before it moved to Nashville. Stayed in Nashville until 1817, made a brief return trip to Knoxville before moving to Murfreesboro in 1818. The General Assembly met there at the state capitol until 1826, and then the state capital was moved to Nashville and where it's been until, until present time. So you can see in the course of about 30 years, the state capital moved six times to four different cities before finally landing in Nashville. The big question though is, how do you get to be a capital for just one day? Well, Kingston has that designation and for on September 21st, 1807, Kingston was the official state capital of Tennessee. How did this come about? Well, as part of the Teleco Treaty of 1805, the Cherokees requested that the state capital be moved to Kingston. This is the same treaty that brought in the land there for the Cumberland Plateau and southern middle Tennessee, the area that was in yellow earlier. And uh, part of the treaty, of course, the Cherokee got paid for their land. Um, there were some other stipulations in there. However, they did not state in the treaty how long Kingston had to be the state capital. And so the state legislature packed up, moved to Kingston, did their business, you know, debated their bills, set the budget, whatever was on the agenda at the time, met for the day, and at the end of the day, moved everything back to Knoxville and resumed business as normal as Knoxville as the state capital. And so that's kind of the short story of how Kingston served as a capital for one day. The big question you're going to ask is, why did the capital keep moving? Couldn't they decide on a location? Well, there's two reasons why the capital kept moving in those early years. One is the population. When Tennessee was established, most of the population was in Upper East Tennessee. That's where the early settlers had made their establishments. People who had come down from Virginia, who crossed the Appalachian Mountains from North Carolina. That's where the people were. But as the population kept growing in number and kept moving across the state to different areas and the settlements kept moving further and further west, then the population kind of followed that and the capital followed that. The second and probably bigger reason was politics. And we know that's the reason why a lot of things move. The early people who helped establish Tennessee had a set of politics that they went by, their own agendas, their own beliefs. As those people became older and fell out of office, a newer set of leaders came into power in Tennessee and wanted 
their ideas done and their agenda taken care of. So politics had a lot to do with moving the capital around several times during that early years of our, of our statehood. Now we get to 1843. At this time, the state legislature had to choose a, sta a permanent state capital. It was in the Constitution. It had to happen. And of course, when you're trying to make a decision, there's a lot of debate. And after much debate, primarily between keeping the capital in Nashville or moving it back to Murfreesboro, the General Assembly finally chose Nashville as the permanent state capital in 1843. So from the time that they met in Nashville in 1826, for nearly 20 years, it was not even the permanent capital then. Once you have a permanent capital, you probably should build a capital building. So in 1845, construction began on the Tennessee State Capitol. William Strickland was an architect and he designed the building and supervised its construction until his death in 1854. If you take a tour around the state capitol, on the outside of the capitol in the north facade, that is where William Strickland is buried, and you can see that. There's a plaque denoting that. After his death, his son took over as architect for about three years. Then they brought in an additional architect to finish up the construction. And our state capitol was finally completed in 1859. There was a little bit of groundwork and final touch-ups that needed to be done, and that work continued until the Civil War broke out in 1861. Here are just a few fun facts to kind of wrap up a little of history about our state capitol. The Tennessee State Capitol stands today much as when it did when it opened in 1859. Of course, there's been some upgrades and modernization to the building, but it's basically the same building it was when they completed construction. Our capital is one of the oldest working capitals in the United States. And it's also one of only 12 state capitals that does not have a dome. Our state capital was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1970 and was named a National Historic Landmark in 1971. And so our 4-H'ers, when they attend State 4-H Congress, in our permanent capital city of Nashville at our state capitol building, built in 1859, get to be in the state capitol. They're in the Senate and the House chambers. They create their own government while they're there and they tour around the state capitol. And this becomes one of the uh, most prestigious trips our 4 H'ers can take, attending state capitol, um, attending the state congress at the state capitol in Nashville. Hopefully today you've learned a little bit more about why Tennessee had so many capitals before they decided on a permanent capital in Nashville. If you'd like some more information, here's the sources for today's lesson. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.